Welcome back to Fox 5 is on the Hill live this Sunday morning. You know, the Senate is going to be back in session just a couple of hours this Sunday, trying to finalize the one trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill. This has not been easy, and that is an understatement. We wanted to hear from both sides this morning. Joining us live is Mark Pache, he's a Republican strategist and former director of the Republican Congressional Committee. Nicole Brenner Schmidt is a Democratic strategist and president of NBS Strategies. Folks, thanks for, for being with us. Nicole, let me start with you. The, the president, really since the beginning of the year, has been saying that infrastructure had to be you know, part of what he viewed as, as, as the Biden recovery package. Here we are in August right now. It looks like he's getting this ball closer and closer to the goal line. But this has been largely, you know, Senate driven. How much of that was the function of the fact that this had to be bipartisan up on the Hill? And how much of it was the fact that Joe Biden was behind the scenes on all of this the whole time? Well, I think a big part of it was that Joe Biden has always had a commitment to this being a bipartisan bill, and he has accomplished that. And I think two Republicans yesterday really uh, articulated what we were facing here. Uh, Senator Kramer from North Dakota said a lot of his colleagues didn't want to support it simply because they didn't want to give Biden a win. And Senator Mitch McConnell said that this is a bill that needs to move forward because Americans on both sides of the aisle want to see the physical infrastructure of our country improved, and we want to see job growth. We've seen a 6.4% economy growth since President Biden has taken office, which is much more than people forecasted. And this Build Back Better agenda is coming together. And it's the delivery of a promise that he made throughout the campaign and that he's delivering on now. Mark, there was a uh, news op-ed analysis piece yesterday that said that this infrastructure bill may be a way for the Republican Party to perhaps inch itself away from Donald Trump. How do you view that and the fact that many Republicans, for the first time in a long time right now, are not only, you know, willing to talk to Democrats, but also negotiate with them out in the open? You know, I'm not sure that that's the question Republicans are asking themselves. You know, I think what they're asking themselves is, uh, is this the right deal for America? And, um, it, it, I like to give a gold medal to Rob Portman for the job that he had to do wrangling uh, Republicans in the Senate. But uh, Donald Trump is an influence, uh, no question about it. But I think, you know, the willingness of Republicans to depart from the Trump doctrine uh, does shed some light on um, other opportunities within the Republican Party going forward. You know, also, Nicole, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has been a supporter of this bipartisan bill. Are you surprised by that when McConnell has in the past, you know, been a little intransient about, you know, reaching across the aisle on these kinds of things? You know, I'm not surprised by it because Mitch McConnell has been very clear that he does not like the party going into a Trump ideology. He very much wants to take that mantle away from the former president. And he knows he's a smart politician. I don't agree with Mitch McConnell on a lot of policy, but he's a shrewd politician and he understands that America and his constituents need this infrastructure bill. There's going to be plenty of other things that he's going to disagree with the Democrats on, but he sees the political advantage for this bill moving forward. Forward and not being the blockade to Americans achieving this. I hey, want to look at the latest numbers on the economy right now. This is what the president had to say about the positive economic news this past week. We learned that the economy created 943,000 new jobs in July. 943,000. The unemployment rate fell by a half a percent to 5.4%. Now, while our economy is far from complete, and while we have doubtlessly will have ups and downs along the way as we continue to battle the Delta surge of COVID, what is indisputable now is this. The Biden plan is working, the Biden plan produces results, and the Biden plan is moving the country forward. Mark, I don't think we've heard the president up to this point take as much direct ownership over this economy as we we have this past week. What's behind that? Well, I think what's behind it is trying to assure middle America that his policies, which many perceived as being very progressive and left wing, are working. 
So this is Joe Biden trying to sell middle America on progressive policies. And good luck with that. You know, the reason Republicans are so attracted to the infrastructure bill isn't just that we need it, but that we need it in middle America. We need it in uh, in hometowns, in in communities across the country, and it touches everybody. Um, and, you know, the Biden plan, when we see the full extent of it, uh, it touches a, a lot fewer people a lot more. Nicole, one of the things that could be coming down the road, though, is an even larger social infrastructure plan that Democrats have been talking about. Does the Democratic Party run the risk of overreaching here if they do get a win on the traditional infrastructure bill and then they go this route with the social infrastructure? Could Republicans just turn around and, you know, go back to the old arguments about, you know, the spending tax Democrats? I'm positive that they will go back to that argument. That is always the, the line from the Republican Party on the Democrats. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for the Democrats. And here's the reality. They're not overreaching. This is what President Biden spoke about through the campaign. This is what the American people elected overwhelmingly to come into power. The Democrats do happen to have the House, the Senate, and the White House by the choice of the voters in this last election. They are working on the agenda that they promised. These, these things don't operate in silos. We can't have an infrastructure bill without an emissions package, without a social structure that also works. That's why it's a build back better plan. It's a broader message for America and plan for America that we spoke about on the campaign. So this is simply the Democrats delivering a promise. Right, Nicole Brenner-Schmitz, Mark Pache, we thank you both for joining us live of this Sunday morning. Good